So I'm in the Mark V uh, Volkswagen. This is a 2009 Jetta. And I have a little problem. This is actually fairly common on these uh, Volkswagens. There's a whole bunch of issues that end up happening with these ignition, these uh, lock cylinders as they wear or get dirty. Um, so I was able, this key was able to come in and out. Um, I didn't have an issue getting it in or out. Um, the issue I had was I could turn the key forward and like unlock the steering wheel, but that was it. I could not advance the key any further to actually start the car. Um, could not actually advance the key far enough to be able to, you know, put your foot on the brake and put the car in neutral. Um, so I could actually have it towed or push it around or whatever. Um, the weirder thing that the key, basically I could not start the car, but sometimes I would get the key to break and it would just spin, um, four or five times in a, uh, around, which really doesn't make any sense. So again, this is kind of a common issue where either the lock cylinder portion here, break, um, wears out or is defective and fails or the whole assembly which is attached across the bottom of the uh the column here fails and that has the lock and everything like that the reason this came apart is in the process you know getting a little overzealous and trying to defeat the uh the interlock to try to get the car in neutral um it actually i broke the uh the little pin that holds the shank to the fob so I'll have to replace that part on the fob, which isn't a big deal. The shank is fine. So the first thing we got to do is remove the trim here, this cover. And it's really pretty simple. Step one is to undo the latch that locks the tilt wheel. All right, so with that down, the wheel moves freely. Um, there's a T20 screw under here, which we have to remove with a T20 driver. And then there's two here. Well, one on this side one on the other side and the way you expose those is by turning the wheel all the way to the right and all the way to the left um, so i'll do that now so as i mentioned there's a t20 right underneath here so we're just going to quickly remove that guy okay so what i did was i turned the steering wheel all the way to the right by taking, like I said, the key does move a little bit. So I move the key to the forward enough to unlock the wheel, cut the wheel hard right, and then took a little flat screwdriver and separated the trim here. So I'm gonna separate the other side and then pull it out. And that's what I was talking about. Top cover comes off and now you see the extra T20 right there that I could remove. Okay. So now I'm going to cut the steering wheel the other way and expose the one on this side. And now there's the other T20. Now the bottom piece of trim can come off. And there it goes. Okay. So the next step is to actually remove the airbag. So I, I disconnected the power and now we're gonna remove the airbag and the airbag is held on by two clips. Um, and the way to get to the clips is again, we're gonna turn the wheel hard right and hard left. And from the back, we're gonna use a screwdriver to undo the metal clip. So you can see now I have the steering wheel turned all the way to the right. I have my mirror in place and it's like, so I can see the hole right here, this hole in the back of the steering wheel. And if you zoom in on it, you see that wire that kind of goes across that tab that's what I need to go in with like my stubby screwdriver and push that little wire right off that tab. So I'm gonna come in here with the little stubby and then push down on that. And see how I just got it off the tab like that? 
and now the airbag will come out. So with the tabs removed, the airbag assembly comes out. We can just kind of rest it without putting too much strain on the, the connector and then undo this connector to remove it. And the way you remove this yellow connector is you see the white part? We're just gonna pull the white part towards us. And it comes out. So there it is, the white part is kinda spring-loaded and you pull it towards you and it releases the connector. So with the airbag removed, I went back and straightened the wheel back out. And I want it perfectly straight so then when I uninstall it and then reinstall it, I'm putting it back to where it was. So with the airbag removed, you, you see the fastener that attaches the wheel to the column. And that is a triple square bit. Um, these are very common on Volkswagen. So I actually recommend you could buy the individual bit. Um, this is a 12 millimeter and I'm 12. Um, but I recommend buying one of these little kits because these triple squares are used throughout Volkswagens. So now I'm just going to put a socket on that or a wrench on that and uh, spin it off. So I just uh, basically grabbed one hand up here and the uh, other on the ratchet and I was able to break it loose. Now, well, you could kind of see it. I was gonna say the other thing you could do is kind of mark the wheel and the column, just so you have a reference point to a line. But you can see someone kind of already did that here. See the little notches on both, even though the one on the column isn't perfectly there. Um, but yeah, you could do that's like a trick here that you could do. And then once you got that, it just comes right off. And here we are. Now, the rest of the stuff is really like just being careful. It looks like there's little Allen keys here. Um, but otherwise, it's really a lot of plastic. You see here, you know, like little lots of plastic clips, things like that, that we have to take our time and be very careful with. Because again, this is what, you know, 12, 13 year old plastic. So we gotta be, be careful not to break any of the tabs because it could be starting to get brittle and that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna take my time and work through removing all the little components here. And you can, you can see the other end of the lock cylinder. We're trying to get to this guy right here. And the worst part is what we gotta do is we gotta expose the top so we can get to the, the, the safety screws that actually hold the cylinder to the column. And then we got to remove those, which is going to be probably the hardest part of this whole job. So now we got to start taking off all these little modules and the switch gear here and the little ring here to get to the, uh, to the switch. So this is a, a Torx bit, a little T9. Um, so I'm going to go in here with it. So I loosened this little Torx screw up, little tiny guy. So now there's uh, plastic tabs that are holding this up, one in the middle, one in the back. So after removing the screw, I reached up into the center back and pushed back on this tab here. And that kind of dropped the back of this out. And the way I disconnected the front of it is I took my little screwdriver and reached in and pushed on this little tab right here, which I was able to see through the screw hole once I removed the screw. So I just stuck the screwdriver in, pushed in, and now that guy dropped out of the way. Okay. Which now means I can take this guy off by undoing these two tabs right here carefully. comes off so we're getting there we're getting to the lock assembly so 
This is the new one, and I just want to show the orientation, right? You can see the end of it. There's the end of the replacement. Um, and I could keep going and remove this top, the plastic here, this cover, to get this guy off. Because what I'm trying to get to is, you see that bolt there in that hole and that one there? Those need to be removed. The problem is it's not easily done because these are on ignition cylinders. These bolts are special in that, you know, they have like a bolt head on them. When you tighten it, the bolt head breaks off, making it basically like a flat flush bolt that you can't use, you know, a socket or anything like that to remove. Um, and it's done on purpose because these are a safety mechanism and, or security mechanism. And if you could just unbolt the part, like what's the point, right? You could steal any car. Um, just again, to show in relation to the new part, those are those two holes. So what I need to do is remove those. I'm going to get my cordless drill and try to drill them out where they are right now. If I can't get good access to them, I'll remove the rest of this here. Uh, but I'm going to give it a whirl. So here's how I'm drilling out those bolts. Um, my regular drill didn't fit in here, but an impact just fits in. I had a right angle drill too, but my impact fits. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with like a smaller hole. Um, onto the drill there, onto the screw head, and then work my way up um, until basically I remove the head. I actually just removed the uh, turn signal stock and the wiper stock that was on the other side, just to make a little more room. These were really easy to come out. Um, basically, there's this little plastic clip on this side that grabbed it right there. And then you see this little tab in here? I just stuck like a butter knife down in when so when this was in here stuck the butter knife in between pried that little tab and then I pried up between the the stop the switch and this back piece and just pushed it forward so these come right out you can see like the little channel that it rides in right there these come out straight forward um, but with them removed now you could really see the um the ignition assembly. Thing I want to point out is going through this whole mess to remove everything is really if you're going to re replace the entire assembly. Um, the assembly itself is really three parts if you think about it. It's the, the black piece at the end here, which is where the key goes, right? And this is um, like if you wanted to rekey the car, this piece actually comes out very easily. Um, by only removing the, the trim on the column without doing any of the steering wheel stuff. Um, you could actually remove this. You turn the key, line up the, there's like a little hole there, that little hole on the silver part. You line that up with that little black hole there and stick a paper clip down in there. And then this assembly pops right out. On the other side, this is actually the ignition switch from like, uh, think of it from an electronics point of view, right? Like this is the actual, the electric switch with the contacts that um, energize the, the ignition system. So sometimes this fails. So like if the switch moves, like, and you could put the car in the crank position, but nothing happens or wacky intermittent stuff happens, that might just be this little guy. And again, this is accessible just by removing that first cover that we did right at the beginning of the video. And this also removes, um, there's a spot where you stick a pin uh, in on each side and like squeeze them and this little guy pops out. What I'm pretty sure is wrong with mine is the center section. And this is what like locks the steering wheel. This is all the fun stuff. And this actually is the part that transfers the motion from the key here and kind of transfers it all the way to the, the electronic switch. So I wanted to pull this whole thing out, really inspect it and see where my problem is. My switch, I'm almost 100% is good. It's either going to be this guy or this guy in the end. Um, but we'll know that when I kind of get it out and get it on a bench and take a look. So really the last two connectors are kind of easy. 
there's this one that goes to the black piece here, which you just push in on that little tab on the back side of this, right there. And then that comes out. And then the other one is this thing right here. So the, this long black clip here, you can see it right here where it's hooking on to the, the assembly. So you just pop that off there. And then this comes out the back. And that's really it. So now there's no more connectors holding the switch on. And it's really just finishing up those two security bolts. So once the security bolts are drilled out, it actually drops down. And you can see where I drilled those bad boys out. And then actually this piece can slide out, um, but there's really no reason to. So now the next step is to mount the new guy. So now that I have the lock, the key cylinder swapped over to the new assembly and the wiring part all clipped in. I went and picked up bolts to mount it. So now these are not security bolts, right? So these have regular hex heads on them. Um, these are metric, so they're M8 by 1.25 and they're 20 millimeters long. So these are what I picked up at the local parts store. I also picked up washers, matching washers, but this is it. I'm gonna start the reassembly. I'm gonna mount this up and uh, bolt these, put these bolts in and just start reassembling everything. And again, probably the worst part of this job really was drilling out those two bolts and, you know, as long as you could get in there with something like an angle drill or something small and make sure you get a nice center before the, you know, bit walks off the, the bolt center, um, you're good to go. So reassembly time. I'm going to take my bolts and just drop them in to the tabs where they go. Okay, with the bolts dropped into place, we can now take the assembly and start getting it to where it goes. So I got this bolt started. Okay, I'll make sure I get the other one started. I wanna make sure I get them you know, nice and straight because it is an aluminum casing. It's nice and tight. So we're gonna take this little wire, this one clipped up here, and then into here, which I believe is the actual immobilizer for the key. So these keys have a RFID chip in them. So you can't just swap the keys. Like you have to match the keys to the ring. You could swap the immobilizer in the actual fob in the key but that's just something to be aware of. That's in, so now we can go back to the, all the fun stuff. Remember these just pushed in and all this stuff just clips. There was very few fasteners, you know, screws and stuff um, when we took this all apart. So this piece, when it comes up, it has a whole bunch of connectors. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is probably the, the you know thing you have to probably be the most careful with. 
uh, reinstalling. Here it goes. So that went up. So like I said, this guy underneath has all these connectors and before you could actually swing up the front of it, you need to replace the this ring piece because um, the connector here connects into the base of that. And it goes on to this shaft there. Remember it has those two little just plastic clips on top. Lock. Latched there. This is uh, the, to cancel the, uh, the turn signal. Okay, and now you can push that up. You heard that click in, and then it gets secured by that little T9 Torx that goes right in the front. Okay, everybody's connected there. Steering wheel. And remember, we want this dead on straight because that's how we left it. Right there, right there. Okay, steering wheel's on. Remember this guy, the triple square. Gonna spin that in. Okay, we're tight. Now it's the airbag, which we're gonna just plug in the little connector and then Pop these two pieces into the clips that are there, and that's all that holds that up. So here, connector went in nice and easy. That popped in. If I really wanted to, well, I could use the mirror to check the uh, clips to make sure they're there, and that's really it. Now it's the putting the trim back. This, this top clamshell in the bottom and the three T20s that held them in. Okay, so with the bottom piece kind of pressed up, now I can turn the wheel to the right to expose where that T20 goes. Turn the wheel the other way, exposing the hole for this one. That's it. And the last T20 comes underneath. And then this last, the top clamshell just clips back on, covering those exposed bolts. And then it's locked the steering wheel, and we are done.